main the actor's name is I believe it's Aiden if that's his first name I'm blanking on his last name but yeah he, he basically had he had his kick his character kill off in the third season so that he could go to work on the Hobbit but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to part one I don't know what they're going with having it in two part parters I mean is it going to be or the a second film be more or less an in between of the Hobbit and Fellowship of the Ring, or is it just going to be a two part continuation mm-hmm. of the Hobbit? It, well, I'll be pro, it'll be in two parts. So that much I'm aware of. I don't know. I've never read the Hobbit. Have you read it? No. Actually, I tried to read the uh, Fellowship of the Ring at one point, but with the way how they wrote it to where. You start it in one spot, and then it completely changes into a different segment of the story. Yeah. yeah. Tolkien, he, I know he liked to show, he liked to talk about every single detail. Which is, to be honest, at times can get a little, it's like, okay, we know, it's great looking. I mean, I've only read halfway through the first Fellowship book. Then I just kind of stopped reading. I was like, uh, I think maybe I should stop reading because it gets... Unfortunately, I'm, people may not want to hear this, but the Fellowship of Ring can get kind of boring at times. Oh, are you talking about the book? Yeah. Movie's awesome. Movie's fucking... Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I, I loved it when I saw it in the theaters. and um, It was all about establishing the characters, which I enjoyed. But then, I mean, when I got out of the theater, there was some dude in the um, lobby bitching about the film. Like, man, it's, it's boring. It's, you know, too, it's too long. I'm like, Looking at it and like, what the hell is this problem? Like, is he high? I, lo- I loved him. I mean, Stormsick, for God forbid, he hated the film. He he, he actually I, he did a review on it saying that he wasn't going to go see or or that he was going to view Two Towers and Return of the King. I'm like, I'm, I told him, like, hey, listen, I, this is not a single film. The whole, all, part, all three parts are one big film. If he, if, he, if he did it in one film, you, you couldn't fit it together. Uh, this is like... Well, then again, we're talking about Storm Sink. He liked the Vader scream in Return of the Jedi. The, no! So I, I don't... I I, keep, I take anything he says with a grain of sand. Well, I mean, I, I have not seen Return of the King... No, wait, 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 wait. Return of the Jedi, sorry. Return of the Return, Jedi. Return, yeah, Return of the Jedi. I've not seen Return of the Jedi in the newer, in the uh, new updated Blu-ray version. I mean, I, I really do not get why George Lucas, you know, updates that shit. I mean, g- give us what we're asking for. Like, uh, give us a episode seven for crying out loud. You know, do a, a se- Hello? Lord knows there's, a, yeah, there's enough material there. I mean, I, I didn't get why. I mean, I, I understand why he changed a little bit here and there. It, for, you know, like with uh, having Hayden show up in the, I don't know if he's still in the new version, but I understand why he put him in there because technically Anakin died, metaphorically speaking, in uh, Revenge of the Sith. So his good side died, so when he became one of the Force, and we're going off topic here, but uh, going back to the Hobbit um, and Lord of the Rings, um, I really enjoy it. You're breaking up a lot, man. I can kind of hear you. It's really staticky. Here. You're still static. I'm not sure what. I can somewhat hear you. It's just kind of. It's really staticky and blurry. Versions because I mean, they go into bigger detail with the characters. 
like uh, the interpretation of if Frodo actually kept the ring, it it would turn out like Gollum. And I, I believe the the son of one of the king, the uh, the kings, you know, that was shown later in um, in a return trip. Um, yeah, Return of the King. You know, he, he, he's the father of the character of that that was played by Austin. No, not Austin. I mean, um, King Bean. But yeah, he was his younger brother who ca- captured a uh, Sam and Frodo, and he was wanting to get the ring, and you know, it was Sam Sam who actually told him, you know, well, this is what happened when your brother tried to do the same thing that you were about to do, and then he he, he looked on that at Frodo and I just I believe it was an interpretation of seeing how Frodo would have turned out if he held on the ring too long but um, in regards to The Hobbit I, I hope they could do it as well as they did with Fellowship of the Ring and Two Towers and Return of the King well, I don't know exactly how they're going to do it well I think I my fear is it's going to become Star Wars syndrome where you got the original films which are great, but then you got the prequels which are crap. That's my biggest fear when it comes to um these two boy the Rings film The Hobbit is that they're gonna the prequels are gonna be absolute crap. But it's Pierre Jackson, and as long as he's not been taking notes from George Lucas or Michael Bay, we should be fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely because. Uh... You know, I mean, I'm a little weary, especially with the two-parter, because I'm just having flashbacks of the Twilight saga thing of, you know, Breaking Dawn having it in two parts and then being, too, yeah. you know, pointless. And here it's like, why have The Hobbit in two parts? I mean, well, did, yeah, I mean, they did animated uh, films of The Hobbit, and they did it all, I don't know how that is in tr- from the uh, with the books, but or no, excuse me, with the book because there's only one Hobbit book. Um, I don't know if that's any more accurate, you know, or if it's closer, but you know, the films are, are normally like what two, two and a half hours, or they fit the entire story into one film. Yeah, actually, I want to go back to Star Wars for just a quick second. I want to say this right now. Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope, great movie. Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, great movie. Return of the Jedi, fair movie. It's not this great film that... I don't like The Return of the Jedi for a few reasons. I mean, this is when I think Lucas started to kind of go into this weird... Just when he started to lose it a bit. Was The first problem with that film was Ewoks. Oh, e- yeah. How could these little creatures take down a freaking empire? I am still trying to deb- figure that one out. That, uh, the, especially since there's one scene when an Ewok actually goes onto a fucking speeder bike and somehow learn- knows how to fucking drive it. It's like, how did he learn how to drive that? What when these things were freaking out over Leia's helmet? Her yeah, exactly. It's like the, the movie. We need some consistency. And the reason I'm bringing this up because in Lord of the Rings Return of the King, it actually made some sense. Aragorn gets a freaking army of the dead, and I'm like, you know what? I'll take that. That makes a lot more sense than teddy bears. Because I'll tell you this right now, if if Aragorn had the fucking little Ewoks battling the orcs, those Ewoks would not have lasted very long. They're little... Because those orcs would have raped them badly. It would have been a slaughter... Yes, I mean, speaking of the, of the Return of the King, my all-time favorite moment of that film was, um, yeah, I forget her name, I mean, she was the blonde uh, daughter of one of the, king, of the I think, Theodore, I don't know if his name was Theodore, or, I mean, it, it, was, yeah, it, was, it was a king where one of his, son, his uh, son, one of his sons, or a son, I don't know if he had more than one son, but his son died, and uh, she wanted to take part in the war, and she, she knows how to use the sword, 
and she it, this is during the whole war scene and uh, one of the villains who had this big iron Darth Vader almost like no 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 more like Boba Fett style helmet and he, he's saying you know no man you know can take me you know and, and she she takes off her helmet and says I'm no man and I think she lops his head off I mean I still remember the the audience in the theater they are cheering when she said I am no man and takes him down that is awesome uh, well, my favorite scene, uh, I have a few scenes I really loved in Return of the King. All three, like, uh, all three Lord of the Rings films are great movies. They really, really did. Peter Jackson did such an amazing job directing those films. But one of the scenes I loved in the, um, in Return of the King, well, a few, was when, um, the ships are arriving and they're like, it's, I believe those Vikings, I forget who those were, they looked like Vikings, um, Aragorn just jumps out of the ship with Legolas and Gimme and they're about to attack. Then an army of the dead just right behind them. It's like, yeah, you guys are royally screwed. Um, Nostalgia Chris even even mentioned that yeah. in his uh, video in the prior in the prior week of the top eleven movie themes. I mean, there are multiple scores and a little section that he liked, and one of them was actually the scene where Aragorn is coming out of the ship. It looks like it's gonna it's gonna be him. And seconds later, the ghost army is right there. And that was just definitely a great moment right there. And another moment I loved with when um was when they see that giant elephant. And he's like, everyone's like Legolas. Legolas gets up there, takes down all the men on that thing, and then takes down the elephant. And then Gimli goes, still only counts as one. I'm not gonna let you take the fucking bullshit right there. God damn it, Legolas beat me. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, um, Legolas and Gimli, their little competition yeah. thing, you know. They're like, that's one, one, two, three, you know, three, four, five, six. And it's like, and then he takes down a, a yeah, it, it, it's the one where he takes down that big elephant. And, 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 and there are, I think, a few more people in there. I don't know if they died, if they died with the elephant, but Gimli look, looks to Legolas and he goes, Still only counts as one. Yeah, there was also another thing that um, if you ever watched the uh, extras, like the behind the scenes of those films, mm -hmm. Peter Jackson. This is the reason why he's a great director and Lucas is a fucking moron now. I, Lucas just has problems. I'm sorry, people, but I don't like George Lucas right now and all the crap he's pulling because no one's afraid. Because everyone's afraid to challenge George Lucas. Peter Jackson, however, though he'll listen. He will listen and. There's scenes that he will start that um, other actors and other pr producers and production crew have said, you know, maybe we should do it this way. It will work better. And he listened to them. And it's very noticeable if you've ever watched. Um, for instance, when Gollum and Frodo are fighting over the ring, originally it was going to be Frodo pushing Gollum off. But um, for the Elijah Wood said, you know, that's not some, that won't really pick Frodo in a great light. Maybe we should have them fighting. And so they decide to have them fighting, and it actually works a lot better because it makes it seem it ultimately makes the ring's downfall the one thing that saved it. He, yeah. it it's greed, the greed of the ring, and I think that was a brilliant move. Um, there's another scene where I believe where Elijah Wood, um, when he's playing Frodo, he tells Sam to leave. He does it more na har more harsh, nasty tone, and somebody said, you know, maybe we should change that to him just saying, "Sam, you need to leave," in a very quiet non-threatening tone and it would have been and he listened yeah yeah i mean cause I, actually, I actually saw the takes of it where some were a, in an angry tone with, with uh, frodo others were uh semi-confrontational and a little calm and then the, the final version which is it was very mild and in a soothing vo voice well, he's trying to be sympathetic and both commanding and saying you know, just go home, Sam. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, like in a sense that it's breaking Frodo's heart that he has to tell it, tell him to go because he doesn't want him to go, but he's at a point this siding with Gollum. Yeah. Which is also one of the film's strength. I, another thing, I mean, and then I, I don't want to compare Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, but they're so like it's just like I always have to compare the prequel to Star Wars films. To Lord of the Rings just because they both came out that same time period and where Lord of the Rings 